Hey everybody, Justin Prime again. I hope you're enjoying this convention series. Um, today I'm going to be talking in depth about how to make money. This is based off my personal experience and how I made money at conventions. Other people make money their own way. Um, this is what worked for me. Now, overall, I, I did really well at conventions. Um, I had enough money to buy and support my own artwork by like, buying this Surface Pro 4 right here, um, <clears throat> as well as all my Copic markers. Uh, paper and all the stuff I would need plus I had money left over that I would spend on my family I, I would look at other people and see how they were doing and I, I noticed that I was selling more stuff um, I it's just it's just the way it was going um, and I think there's some key things that can really help you do the same thing if you follow them um, I have four main tips and I'm gonna break these down in, uh, in, in depth but there's four main things that I would recommend that you do at, in an artist alley to make money I will say this applies to amateur artists in Artist Alley, not really to pros. Pros are on a different level. People will come and spend tons of money on them for their name and their talent, of course. But their name and their signature and what they've achieved, it, it means something. And those of us that are considered amateurs in Artist Alley, we're not, we're not at that level. While you're listening to this, you should be drawing, seriously. There's a few things that I'll be referencing that I'll put up on screen, um, like my own artwork just to give you examples, but you need to be drawing. Uh, while I'm talking with you and recording this, I'm going to be working on the digital version of the Pink Cloud Sculpture Mask or helmet. Um, so you need to be doing the same thing, like find something to do. Don't just sit there and listen or watch. I want you to be working, all right? All right, so making money tip number one is say hi. And there's a lot more to this, but just say hi to people. It, it that makes such a huge difference. I, I've literally just people will be walking by my booth, uh, not even looking in my direction, and I just say, "Hey, what's up?" or "Hey, how you doing?" Um, "How you doing?" You know, it's just it's it's easy. It's really simple, and they look over, and all of a sudden they want to you know chat it up a little bit, or look at my portfolio, or just look at the display stuff that I have out. Um, but I've, I've made a bunch of sales just from saying hi to people that, uh, well, to every, I say hi to everyone really, but, uh, yeah, just, just say hi. It, it's, it's huge. It is a very, very big deal. And if you get nothing else out of this video, just say hi to people, be friendly, be courteous. It makes a huge difference. Your neighbors are probably not going to be saying hi to people. Um, a lot of your neighbors will be very quiet. Um, or they'll be worn out and tired after the weekend. Um, but just, or maybe they won't be doing very well and they'll feel defeated, but say hi to people. It's, it's so important. So along with that, this is like 1A. Don't just sit there. You cannot just sit there at your table. It's, it's a waste of time. When I see artists go there and just sit, it pisses me off because somebody else could be at that table making money or drawing or connecting or whatever. Don't just sit there. Stay off your phone. Don't just draw. You're not, you're not there to draw. You're there to sell. You're there to make connections. Don't just draw. Um, I, I, yeah. So stay off your phone. Um, sometimes I do, well, not, not sometimes, but I, w I was, I'll upload stuff as I'm drawing it, like to Instagram after I'm done doing a commission. Nothing wrong with that. You don't want to be doing that, obviously, in the middle of a conversation. Um, phone use is for when you have dead time not for when people are in front of you. If you're on your phone and someone walks by, put it down and say hello. Very easy, right? If you've had some customer service experience, it'll go a long, long way at a convention. Just basic customer service. If you're gonna draw, like you should, hopefully you are drawing because you're getting commissions, but every now and then look up. It, like It's not that hard to know when people are walking by, so look up and say hello. You have to engage with people. You're, you can't expect that they're just going to walk up and buy your stuff. You don't have a right to their money. And there's a whole bunch of other people there that want it. Maybe as bad or worse than you. I'm one of those people. I, to me, it's a competition. I am there competing for other people's money. And I'm more aggressive than my neighbors. So, be engaging. Basic customer service. Be pleasant. But don't be annoying. Don't push people. That, that's annoying. No car salesman. Use car salesman kind of crap. Just be, just be friendly. It, it makes a huge difference. So when you do say hi and they do come over, 
Um, ask them how the convention's going. Just simple conversational things. Did you buy anything good today? Um, how's the convention been? Have you seen any good cosplays? Just simple, basic conversation. And then when they're there, invite them to look through your portfolio or to look through your stands, whatever you have out there, because people will come up, but they don't assume they can touch your stuff. So give them permission to look through your stuff. And that helps out a lot. They say, okay, I will. And they do. Um, so they will be touching your stuff, which is good. Have some prints that are dedicated to be displays that you don't that you that you know they'll get fingerprinted or whatever, or wrinkled maybe. But have some stuff out there that you know will be for displays and you know will get damaged. Um, okay, so say hi, do all that stuff. Also, part of this is bring somebody with you, um, and it doesn't seem like it's part of it, but it is because having somebody with you keeps your spirits up. It makes such a big deal. It, it, it makes such a big difference to keep you to keep your spirits up and to keep you happy, to keep yourself happy. People feel that when they walk by. They feel it and they want to be a part of it. They're way more likely to come by and check out what you got. So have somebody with you. Um, have an energy drink, but stay upbeat. People will be attracted to not just your artwork, but you as a person. And I, a lot of people told me that, like, they could tell that I was into it. They could tell that I was a genuine artist and I wasn't just trying to like make money, basically, which is cool. Um, but they, they feel that. People can feel the vibe you give off, right? So number one is just say hi, and all those bullet points go along with it. But say hi. I'm not a social person. I, I'm not good at being social and striking up conversation. But I do have, I did have a lot of customer service experience. I know how to bullshit with people, um, you know, well enough. You know what I mean? One warning I will say is when you say hi and you get people chit-chatting with you, that stuff can go on forever, so you have to be able to know when to wind it down. Um, and just keep it general, like how's the, how's the convention going, and just simple pleasantries. But a lot of the people at conventions, and I'm sorry if you're one of these people, but they don't know how to shut up. and They, they keep going on and on and on about nonsense, and that just clogs up your table. So you want to kind of keep it moving, but be pleasant. And the people in line that are waiting to see your stuff, they will really appreciate that. All right, um, number two, get outside of your area. If, if you've saturated your market, get outside of your market. This is an area where I didn't do that great in, um, which is for many reasons. Um, I kind of stayed in one area, and I saturated it, and people knew me, and they knew my stuff, and they had already bought it last year, and blah, blah, blah. So I kind of burnt out of my, my immediate area, I think. So get out of your area. If you can travel, do it. Um, and then also, if you can't travel and you keep doing the same conventions over and over again, be making sure that you're creating new content. People, if they like you, they'll come back. Uh, make sure you're creating new content and continually improving your skill uh, so you have something new to show them. All right, number three, the third way to make money based on my own experience, uh, draw for you first and then sell that. So... People do this differently. Some people will, well, I'll, I'll go into that in a second. But basically the way I work is I draw for me. I draw on a, for me. Like, I want to make myself laugh or creep myself out when I draw something. I draw for me. And once I'm happy with it, that, that tells me, okay, somebody else might like this too. And then it would be worth selling. I don't draw based on making money. There have been times where I've attempted that and it failed miserably. Um, like this print right here, the, the Ray and Chewie one. I drew this when Star Wars Episode 7 came out um, because I thought it would be popular. And I don't think I sold a single one. I think it was, you can feel it, my heart wasn't into it. Um, but other things where I'm doing it for fun and just for me, I sell a lot of them. I, I do really well. Like you, you can feel. You can feel when someone's into it. Like You just can. Um, there are people at conventions that I guess, make money off of just drawing what other people want. Like when Guardians of the Galaxy 1 or 2 came out, they made Groot on everything. Deadpool comes out, Deadpool's on everything. I, I, I have my fair share of Deadpool stuff. He's always popular. Um, so people, I'm sure, make money off of just drawing what other people want. Um, I don't see a whole lot of value in that. It seems stale. It seems boring and really predictable. So people walk up. And I don't think they're amazed by that unless you're, you're just you're super talented. Uh, so for that, my recommendation is draw for you first and then sell that. 
for me, I like mashups, I like comedy, and I like creepy things. Um, I also go for this, I call it like a one-two punch. So the first, I guess maybe a one-two-three punch. The first punch is the initial impact of the visual. So it has to be visually striking, it has to be composed well, the right colors, the right layout, blah, blah, blah. But then the content has to flow from that. And then I like to have a second level of content. So if you see like on my Ninja Turtle symbiote, uh, this piece right here, there's a nice initial impact that people see. Um, there's like some action in it, you can feel, there's like a team going on and, and it's the turtles. The second impact, the second punch then is it's the turtles looking creepy. And then the third punch is when, when the customer realizes, oh, it's the turtles with the Venom symbiote and there's the Venom right there and they're all teamed together. So it's like a one, two, three punch. I go for at least two punches, sometimes you get three in there. Um, another example is the Deadpool Nintendo piece that I that I did. Um, right away, people see it's got a nice, you know, simple layout, bright colors. But what they notice is, oh, is that a creepy, or is that a monster Yoshi? And then they look at it closer and like, oh, there's Pokeballs, and there's a Princess Peach um, crown, and there's the Samus Blaster, and and the Mario background, and, and it's an experience. So it's not just like a drawing of Deadpool. There, there's something, there's a one, two, three punch. Um, and my last example here is my creepy Ronald McDonald. I've done a couple of these, but this is the first one. Um, this is one of my, my like a crowd favorite. People love this one. It's, it's a show, not shows. It, people will stop to look at it. Um, and at first it's like, oh, creepy Ronald. That's, you know, I guess the first punch is, you know, it's, it's an interesting layout. Second punch is um, creepy Ronald. And the third punch is, oh, there's kids that are, you know, he's got fries stuffed into one of their mouths and the other girl's looking kind of like they're happy about it and blah, blah, blah. So there's a, at least a couple punches in there and people like that stuff. So the way I make money is not just by having everything, you know, like I, people won't walk up to my table and see that I don't, I don't have a single Wonder Woman print. Um, I don't have any Superman. I don't have any Dragon Ball. I don't have all that stuff. So that's not what people are looking for, but they are getting an experience. When people look through my portfolio, they're laughing, um, they're shocked in a good way, they're calling their friends over, they're creeped out, they flip through the entire book because each page has content that is giving them an experience, an emotional experience, a social experience. That's how I make my money is I'm giving people a genuine experience. They have a lot of fun. I mean, I love watching people flip through my portfolio. It's a lot of fun. Um, other, so like I said, people will sell what's popular, you know, Star Wars Episode Eight comes out, people are going to be buying stuff for that, you know, that's not my style, but I'm sure people are making money that way, um, as long as your style and, you know, your, um, content is good enough and not just because it's Star Wars Episode Eight or whatever. Um, Spider-Man, people, everyone's drawn Spider-Man Homecoming, I'm sure. Uh... And then also selling based on who the special guest is, if there's a special guest, like if the dude who's playing Spider-Man and Spider-Man Homecoming, whatever his name is, if he's at a convention, um, if you can draw Spider-Man or draw his portrait or whatever, people might buy that and then go off, you know, get his signature, hopefully. So buying or making art, you know, prints based on stuff like that, it might be popular. That's not my style, but whatever. Um... And then the other thing I'd recommend, this is not easy to do, but find something that clicks. Find a, a thing that clicks. I hate to call it a gimmick, but it kind of is. Again, this is not something that I would do. Um, I find it monotonous. I get bored doing something over and over again, typically. Um, but, you know, this, this might be your thing. So finding a thing that clicks. There's a guy who I talk to and I really want to interview. Um... He does this thing called Hand Over the Hero, uh, and he it's it's basically like a you know a character being uh, handed over by another character. So all you see is the character in like a chibi style, and the hands that are holding it, you don't see the full body, you just see the hands. So it's like Spider-Man chibi style being handed over by Iron Man. So it's a cute idea, it's fun, and his execution is pretty solid. So when people walk over it, it's like they see the cute idea, it's a fun idea, and he's a great salesman. And so what people will do is look for their character, and this guy makes a ton of money. He does, not, not a ton of money, but he, he does really, really well. He's the only person I've seen that's not a professional that was outselling me. He, he was absolutely destroying. I mean, so if you find a thing that clicks, 
and you can do that over and over again, do it. Run with it. For me, if I was going to go that route, it might have been doing like symbiote versions of different characters. The symbiote turtles is my highest selling one by far. Um, so I, I might have done that. But what I did try to do was I tried to do a symbiote Megatron. And I did a, a separate symbiote Leonardo. And those didn't sell <laughs> at all. Um, probably because I wasn't feeling it. Um, and people, people might have been able to feel the, the symbiote Megatron. I wasn't feeling it. I just kind of did it. The symbiote Leonardo, I was actually pretty proud of that piece. It just, I don't know, just didn't sell. So if you find something that clicks and, and you can, you know, run with it, run with it. Personally, I just, I lose interest in stuff pretty quickly. So that wouldn't work for me. All right, number four the, and the final one. The final way to make some money is to minimize your expenses. Cons can be very expensive, but there's ways to minimize how much you're spending. Buy food cheap beforehand like at a Safeway or whatever, do not buy it at the convention. The food at the convention is really expensive, just like if you go to a sporting event, you know, like if you go to a baseball game or whatever. Food is not cheap. It's really expensive and probably not very good. But um, buy your food ahead of, ahead of time and bring it in like a small cooler. I like to bring in a sandwich and a salad and like an energy drink. Um, I always have like a protein bar in the morning that I bring from home. Um, with like a, a bagel I bring from home. Like don't spend the money if you don't need to. It'll help you, see, you know, um, trim your costs, obviously. Um, if you are traveling, stay with somebody that you know. Um, avoid hotel costs if you have to. That, that eats away at your profit. Um, if you know someone who is doing conventions in a different area and you guys wanted to do like a couch swapping thing, um, I thought that would be a great idea. It's not something I ever did. But... Um, you know, just trading off. Hey, when I'm in your area in Seattle, let me stay at your, on your couch. When you come down to my area in Southern California, you can stay on my couch. Uh, also, minimizing expenses is print from home. There is a bigger upfront cost, like buying a printer and ink, but it is absolutely worth it. I used to do a lot of printing from home. It ended up being way too time-consuming and stressful, so I stopped. But if you can print from home, you can save a lot of money. Um, if buying third-party ink, like I have an Epson printer, I don't buy Epson ink. Epson ink is ridiculously expensive, and it's not even archival quality. It, it won't last as long as third-party ink. So I go through, or I, yeah, I still do for small prints, but I, I go through a company called Ink Owl, and they sell um, their own third-party ink that will fit into an Epson printer with refillable cartridges. The pros for this are the cost. It costs a lot less, a lot less. And the quality is archival. It will last for decades. So that's a huge benefit. The con, though, is that you do lose some color quality because Ink Owl, in particular, uses pigment ink and Epson uses uh, dye-based ink, I think it was. So the pigment ink is... Uh, it just it doesn't have quite the same visual kick in the nuts. Uh, you just I'm, I, There are other third-party inks out there that really kind of have a closer match in um, in color, you know, kick in the nuttiness, but you might lose the archival. So it's kind of a, you know, trade-off. Uh, buying paper in bulk off eBay, huge bonus, and it's uh, archival if you can find the right stuff. Um, the, the con here is, though, that printing from home is way, way, way more stressful. That's it, though. Those are my four tips in depth. If you have other ideas that have worked for you, please let me know in the comments. If you're not subscribing already, please give me a subscription. Hopefully I won you over with this video. Um, hit the like button. Ask questions. I'm, I'm happy to answer anything. Just leave them in the comments. And until next time, thank you very, very much for watching this.